それではネスターさんよろしくお願いしますネスターさんはじめまして、ネストです。スペインから来ました。カナリショトです。よろしくお願いします。Sorry that I'm、uh, gonna be the only Japanese I know, but I、uh, hope、uh, I did it <laughs> good. Okay? So, thank you first of all、uh, to the organization t o bring me this opportunity to be here to tell you about cybersecurity, about hacking, and so on.、Uh, I'm pretty honored to be here, and I've been here. A couple of months, and I love your country, really. I, I will return for sure. So let's try, let's try to talk about hacking WordPress. And I say try because it's kind of technical, so I don't want to、uh, overflow you. Okay? So, first of all, Konnichiwa.、Uh, talking about me a little bit more, I am a computer science、uh, engineer. Um, but the important part is that I am a very, very curious person, right? I started in Sukuri in 2015,、uh, and I worked in incident response.、Uh, it's you know, the department which a r e a r e s p o n s i b l e when something bad happens and you have to clean, you have to restore all the things in the,、uh, to the original、uh, status. And in 2019, this year, I have、uh, participated as interim head of IT in GoDaddy in the Spanish branch because they needed to、uh, migrate some infrastructure. So they needed someone to lead that, and I helped with them with that. Another question that people ask me is where is Canaria Shuttle? So here it is. Okay, it's a Some a group of islands in the middle of、uh, Atlantic Ocean. I was born and raised here. And some people say that it's very, pretty similar to Okinawa, okay? So <laughs> maybe next,、uh, next week I will, I will travel to Okinawa, so let's find out. How about Sukuri? Sukuri is、uh, the company I, was,、uh, I am working in.、Uh, Sukuri is not bad spelling, okay? It means anaconda in Brazilian. But you know, Sukuri. Works very well because it's very similar to security or security. Or security. It's about the website, website security. Okay, so later in the presentation, we're gonna try to、uh, separate what means cybersecurity and website、uh, and where is web security or website security inside of、um, of the cybersecurity.、Uh, but this is a full remote、uh, company.、Uh, we are more. In more than 25、uh, countries around the world, and it started in 2008. And in 2017,、uh, it was、uh, acquired by Godaddy, and now we are part of Godaddy as Sukuri and also as Godaddy、uh, security team. I recommend to you to check this,、uh, these scanners. SiteCheck is a very、uh, well known around the world scanner just to check if your web page is okay. Uh, there is not a very, uh, uh, very visible、uh, threat in it, on it. And there's a performance one, so you can check how your、uh, website performs、uh, against our nodes around the world. So you can just take an idea of how, of,、uh, how your site performs to any people or to every people in the world. So this is my. My、uh, map,、uh, when I th- started to think about this presentation, I'm going to take you through these concepts, these topics. I will start just talking,、uh, setting up、uh, some concepts. This is not going to be very boring, I promise.、Uh, the second one is you know, the art of war, so how we can hack a WordPress and also understand how to defend it. And the third section is going to be some content measures、uh, to avoid this risk as much as, I, as we can. 
So let's start first with concepts. Uh, one of the things I always say in my presentations is I'm going to work with sensitive data. So I prefer to say that any sensitive data is going to be protected or encrypted in this pre presentation to preserve privacy. So anything that you see uh, which could be similar to reality is just a coincidence. Everything I say is what I'm responsible for. for know what you interpret, so if you have any doubt, if you have any question, ask always to an expert. This is another slide that is always present in my, in my presentation. Um, this is pretty much how we feel in the cybersecurity world. Uh, this, uh, this guy, John Chamber, is the CEO of Cisco. Cisco is a very big company and about a network uh, infrastructure around the world. And he says there are two kinds of uh, company, right? Uh, ones, those that have been hacked and those that doesn't know that have been hacked. So when we say hack, uh, what we what we means? Uh, it's something, it's a website that has been attacked by a hacker. But what is really a hacker? I always say, so try to educate people to not uh, misuse the term hacker, because hacker means a curious person who goes beyond something, beyond, say, commercializing, commercializing, uh, right, <laughs> sorry, beyond limits, and find other uses for things that uh, are not intended for that, right? For example, if you are feeling yourself a little bit sleepy and you drink coffee, you are biohacking yourself. If you, are, if you use a bottleneck just to uh, get organized your nap kits, you are hacking the, the bottleneck, right? So hacker is just use, in other words, other things. But if we are talking about cybersecurity, we are talking about computer hackers. and in this uh, presentation, I just present your, uh, my uh, cyber terrorist pet. <laughs> this say hi there. And it's, uh, he's going to represent in this presentation the hacker, right? The bad guy, the, uh, you know, the kraken. Also, it's another name we know you use in this, uh, in this world. A computer hacker, a cyber terrorist is a computer hacker that is always aligned to enrich himself, normally against others, right? So to distinguish more or less what a hacker is, because at the end, if I am a very curious person, I feel myself as a hacker. So to distinguish a little bit how hackers uh, behave in this world, we normally separate in hat colors, okay? So black hat hackers are normally the cyber terrorists, the thieves, and white hackers, white hat hackers, are the security analysts or ethical hackers or also members of the blue team, it's also known as like that, like that right? Um, there is a gray area in, in the middle, those uh, who normally has good intentions but do things uh, in an illegal way, is what we call normally gray hat hackers, okay? So like, for example, John Snowden, if you remember some years ago, uh, he, he released some papers, very interesting pe uh, papers uh, to the world with a good intention, but uh, obviously illegally. Well, what hackers do? Normally they create malware or they inject malware in the websites, and malware is just software intentionally designed to, uh, to cause damage to computers, to clients, to persons, to networks, so whatever. And malware has a lot of uh, names. Probably some of them sounds to you, uh, you know, backdoors, uh, Trojan horses, ransomware. Uh, but then I'm not going to get deep, in deep into this. As I told you, cybersecurity is a huge uh, um, field of study, okay? So web security is just one of the fields inside of cybersecurity. Uh, so in the real world, normally we, all of the people that, that are here has at least two identities, right? The real one, which are you know, as persons, uh, and the digital one normally conforms with a lot of uh, nicknames, accounts, and so on around the internet. 
So if you care about security in the real world, why not you care about the security in your digital world? So uh, cybersecurity is the security in the in digital world. And web security is just a field, especially uh, all that happens through the port 80 or 443 if you are a little bit uh, technical savvy, right? Then this slide is intended to blow your mind a little bit, okay? So there are six interesting facts here. The first one, say hacking is almost never client-oriented. Client I mean, doesn't mind if you have a site with a, a store for kitten or to raise funds for something uh, social or something like that. They don't mind. It's, they are just crawling internet and finding some vulnerabilities and just if you have that, they don't mind what are you doing. They just get your side. So normally it happens because you uh, or your company or the company, uh, the hosting company or the administrator you have hired for that um, is not making a good monitoring or maintenance of the site. Normally, okay, so that's the most typical reason. Another, another interesting fact here is that the, uh, the people doesn't understand what a SSL certificate is. So let me just explain that the SSL certificate is not an anti-hacking uh, shield. I mean, having an SSL certificate is not going to protect you to be hacked. SSL certificate is only intended to assure the communication from your device to the server. So if there is a hacker hacking your server, it's going to hack securely. No, another fact is interesting. Normally, in security, we are behind hackers, okay? So patches and security updates appears almost always after hacking exploits, which translate means if there is an update or a patch of security, means that there are some hackers around the world with information to hack your site because it's outdated, okay? And um, the next one is a Latin quote I always use. is something just to give some perspective. It means human being fails. In Latin, sounds something like erraru um, errare humanum est. Okay, so human being fails. It means everything you do or we do as humans could fail. And in ten, um, based on that, security will never be 100% effective. So if you install a lot of plugins, if you have a firewall, if you have SSL, if you have any of the security things in your site, it won't uh, assure a 100% effective effectiveness of uh, security, right? It could be 90 or something like that, but it's, uh, there is always holes, right? This is... Um, um, a graph just uh, got from uh, some reports that we have in, uh, in Sukuri. You can visit in sukuri.net uh, website. You have a blog site and also you have some reports. This one is very interesting. As you can see, the, the WordPress is clearly the more targeted, the more, most targeted um, uh, platform internet. So it does not and this is not meaning that the uh, WordPress is insecure, okay? That means that it's the most targeted. It is because also the 34% of the world, of the worldwide website in, uh, around the world, in, uh, in internet, is made by WordPress. It's something like one of every three. So, but it's interesting that hackers are focused, especially in WordPress. So now, Let's go further to the art of war. Try, we have to put ourselves in the hacker's skin. We have to try to think as a hacker, as a, as a black hat hacker, okay? And try to understand why they, uh, what they want from our platform, what they want from our website, okay? So let's get in the, into the mind of your enemy. First of all, what, the hack, what a black hat hacker wants from my website. 
The common targets are normally users' information. So if you have users in your site, customers, if you have a subscriber or something like that, they are probably um, a, an email address, a name, nicknames, and so on. Those are information that hackers values a lot, okay? So user info is important. Also the database information, everything you put so you put in the in your website normally is in the database as well. Uh, website content. If you are selling products like, for example, plugins, or you are uh, selling, I don't know, photographs or something like that, normally you have them in your media uh, manager in the WordPress and so on. So it is in the in the in your website. So maybe hackers are interesting on that as well. Uh, infrastructure is important as well. N normally, people uh, doesn't understand uh, this part because uh, it's a little bit technical. But there is people that use your website as a platform, for example, to uh, crypto uh, cryptocurrency mining, for example. Okay, so or they can use your website, but not website, your server, your server resources, for example, to attack a another one. Okay. So infrastructure is also important. Uh, they may need your website to use it in a botnet as well, or they need your reputation. So if you work hard during a lot of time to raise your reputation in, in, the, net, in the social networks or in the certain giants, because you need to be in the first position or something like that, it's a real, real risk if you get hacked that you can see how your reputation or your uh, hard work to be in the first position, the search engine, something like that, just vanish in the air. So taking care about the reputation is important as well. So there is a quote in the Art of War saying something like, know yourself and know your enemy and you will win all the battles, right? So let's know our weaknesses. There is a lot, of course, but these are the most important. The first one is the most important, in fact. You are, we are, as users, the weakest point always. Okay, so you can, scam, you can be scammed, you can use bad passwords, you can, or easy, easy to hack up passwords, or you can just, uh, I don't know, you can just install freemium plugins just because you, can, you want to save some money and the freemium plugin has uh, inside a Trojan or they have inside something that hacks your site. So at the end, we are at the weakest point. Password, as I mentioned, are vulnerable to brute force attacks. For example, this image is very typical. Uh, don't use easy passwords. Just invest a little bit of time trying to uh, remember good, strong passwords or use uh, at uh, second factor authentication method is uh, another way of making this stronger. Uh, there are some left, left, uh, leftovers. I mean, for example, uh, you are making a new version of the website, and if you want to make easier to your uh, to the owner of the website to get into the website and check how it's how it is going, you normally gonna create a very easy uh, to remember uh, login, something like admin123 or something like that. So when we do that, uh, we have to be very careful. Uh, we have to manage to control these kind of things because uh, the leftovers are other of the main reasons or the main factors or the main vector of infections in the websites. So I can hack your site, for example, just getting into the dash new website uh, website and then just uh, exploit your password because it was very easy or something like that. So if you create these kind of things, remember to remove uh, if they are not used, okay? And the other big reason is outdated or vulnerable software. So as, um, maybe if you are not very technical, you um, don't understand that uh, your website is just a, lay, a layer of the, of the whole system. So you can be 
in a hosting, a very uh, cheap hosting or something like that, uh, where the PHP version, for example, is very old, or um, the Apache, Apache version is also very old, Nginx or something like that. So uh, having your website in uh, in an outdated environment is very dangerous as well. And being inside of your site, if you have plugins, if you have themes, and you don't uh, update them, uh, you are putting your site in risk. Also, as I said there, even if they are disabled, so if you are not using a plugin, remove them. If you are not using a theme, remove it, okay? Don't disable or don't just keep there. And if you will do that, please update anyway. So the last one is very obvious. Just secure your connection. Avoid uh, public Wi-Fi's. You can be vulnerable to man-in-the-middle hackers, uh, or black hat hackers, people that are in public spaces just uh, looking what the people are just uh, transmitting through that network. And you don't know how many information you can gather in a, just in an hour in a place like a university or like a coffee, a Starbucks coffee or something like that, okay? So let's go into the hacking WordPress, the process. So this is a very short uh, slide, but let me explain a little bit. Uh, first of all, try to imagine your website as a castle and try to imagine your security as a wall around the castle, okay? So, a hacker can hack your site if there is a hole in your wall. So that hole is what we call vulnerability. And hackers, when they find a hole, they click create exploit, which is a software that leverage that uh, vulnerability. And once they get access to your site, they inject something. They can inject just only final code, for example, spam things, Spam in the comments, spam in your uh, in your uh, folders, uh, in your directory, uh, tree directory. Uh, a backdoor just to get access to the to the website later, even if you have plugged that uh, vulnerability. And using a backdoor, you can later inject whatever you want, spam use the website as a, as, as a bot node or inject more final code, whatever you want. So all what the hacker needs is a hole in your wall. That hole can happen in any moment. Uh, there is uh, a lot of networks of uh, black hat hackers around the world just communicating between them. Uh, and if any of them just find a hole, they're going to exploit that. Uh, in massively, so they they're gonna find, for example, if they now we are in the version of WordPress uh, 5.3, I think, and I think there is a 5.2 or three or something like that. Put 5.2.3 or something like that. There is a vulnerability in the in the core, so they can use it to hack. So people or hackers are. Uh, but hackers are just crawling internet to get all the WordPress not updated just to use that hole with exploits. So as I said, vulnerability is just a bug in the code or a possibility of misuse a uh, leggy code that can be explode, exploited uh, to perform authorized, unauthorized actions within a computer system. Exploit is just the software to leverage that vulnerability and the backdoor is just malware injecting your site that can that allows remote execution of code even if you have plugged that vulnerability. Okay, so when you get a backdoor in your site, you are uh, boost. Okay, this is a very interesting website if you are uh, curious about. It's uh, the BPS scan vulnerability database. I think is sponsored by Automatic. Uh, this is a list of uh, known uh, vulnerabilities. So you can check from time to time to check if uh, the plugins you have, the version plugins uh, are vulnerable or uh, there is something around the world, a wave or, uh, of attacks uh, specifically um, focused in a 
in a version or a specific version of, that you can see here. Okay, so BP vulnerability database dot com is very interesting if you are Korean enough. So let me just show some examples I selected for you. Uh, there are a lot. I have to I had to select just three of them. The first one is defacement. Uh, probably the most visual, the most spectacular one. So could you imagine if my website is this one? And tomorrow when I wake up in the morning, I see this. So I have been defaced, okay? And this is a real example. For example, uh, for in this case, a photographer gallery. This is an extract of the website, okay? Look like this. And one day just uh, look like this. So could you imagine the stress of the of the customer? Something like, oh, I've been hacked. How could be I mean, my reputation gonna be uh, gonna low? So it's important, okay? What happened here? If you are curious enough, is like uh, the hacker just got into the website, took a picture of the website, and then just code this fancy message in the top of it, rename it as an index dot html and since the majority of the web servers uh, around the world load first the html uh, files instead of php ones this one was the the um, the first page when the people try to load the domain just removing it the removing the index dot uh, html uh, was enough to fix this issue uh, or maybe reinstalling the WordPress core folders. That works. In a lot of cases, that works. So another case, for example, a pet store, and the day after, you can find this. This is, as you can see, this a message, a political message, right? It's um, uh, about free Syria people and so on, declaring war and so on, right? As a bonus, I can just show another one. I, I love the design of this one. I really don't understand what this says, but <laughs> it's probably about a security team around the world, or something probably about Turkish people or something like that, okay? So just summarizing, defacement is a partial or full replacement of the website front end, very obvious, uh, easy for to detect. Users can detect it easily than you because you are not visiting your website every day. So hear them, uh, provide to them of enough uh, channels to communicate to you. So they will help you very a lot. Um, it's, a special, it's important that they, when you get hacked, the most important factor is the time. So the sooner you get that you have been hacked and you fix that will help to the loss of reputation and will help a lot, okay? Scanners also detect this very easily. Uh, at the end, it's just a matter of awareness, social, political measures or indications or, uh, you know, claimings. Another example is the black hat seal or spam. I mentioned it before. For example, here we have a, a design agency I just uh, uh, cover the name of the of the agency, but uh, uh, for sure the banner is not intended to be there. So probably they don't sell Viagra. <laughs> probably I don't know, but they probably. So what the hackers did is just put that banner in your website. So everyone that comes into your website and try to contact you say uh, see that you sell by Viagra, right? Or, for example, this is a cleaning uh, company uh, who got the header also full of uh, spam. It's, in this case, it's just text, something like selling applications in, uh, in Google Store or something like that. But it's clearly a spam, right? So the result of this, if you, are, if you, are, uh, if you don't get it soon, is this. You get banned by Google or by other blacklisting vendors, and then you can get your, the, this fancy tag in the, in the Google search results. 
your in this side may be hot. So your reputation will be affected for sure, okay? Here is another example at the, at the, at the left. You can see that you can, uh, trying to find a, a website in Google, there is uh, this kind of message like cheap Nike shoes or uh, something like that, right? And in the right, you can see a spam injected directly in the, in the directory tree. Those uh, that are, uh, have been highlighted are spam. They, inside of them, they have just a lot of HTML um, web page with uh, spam um, terms, right? What is intended here is, uh, is to target your CEO or your reputation. Maybe your competitor just hired these hackers and try to lower your reputation because they want just to uh, surprise your, you in the in Google or something like that, or they want just to not uh, to, to make you not selling so much as they. The detection of this is very easy as well because the term, spam terms are always more or less the same ones. So as I always say, here are your users, right? TDDOs attacks or botnets. This is a little bit difficult to understand. Let me just introduce some uh, uh, some definitions. Uh, DOS attack is a denial of service, which means it's overhauled the application with a huge amount of petitions. If you have a person who just get tickets and you put 500 of people giving tickets to that guy, the, probably the guy gonna collapse, okay? So a DDoS happens when it is a distributed, uh, distributed uh, attack. So it's not only a lot of uh, petitions from one point to another point, it's a lot of points asking for a service to a, a website. And this normally happens because there is a botnet. There is a, a net of computers or a net of uh, websites that has been that have been hacked, and they coordinated attack or, or ask for information to a website. Okay, so this is a graphic, but you can just check uh, later if you want. So there is a this site Norse is a real time map of the DDoS attack around the world. So here you can see a normal situation, just maybe tending to, to be very calm. Normally it's a little bit more busy. But in 2016, if you remember uh, all the services, uh, the common social network services like, for example, Netflix, Twitter, WhatsApp, and so on, and so, some others just fell down. And it, was, it happened because of this. A lot of... Uh, uh, of nodes around the world attack specifically one service, which is uh, called a DIN, that has been, uh, is used by these services uh, around the world. They, that, that year were also, happened also another uh, very famous attack, but it was performed by uh, CCTVs, okay? So DDoS attack looks like something like this. This is a graphical representation of a DDoS attack. So it's, the idea is clear, right? Well, affect to infrastructure. It's very difficult to, uh, to, to point this kind of, uh, uh, of attacks. Normally, because you detect a strange use of resources, or you have a file integrity scanner and you have someone dedicated to, uh, to check that. So the, here it's recommended to have a WAF, a, um, a web application firewall, okay? Target normally are just service resources or just to make your site as a zombie node. So uh, we reach the third part of uh, my presentation. This is a very quick one. What is uh, what countermeasures are recommended? Okay, first of all, let's talk that if something bad happens, which are the characters in this story? Right, first you, you your side, the admin and the owner has been 
uh, has to be notified, okay? But also your users and clients, if there is, for example, a, a credit card leak, of inf a credit card information leak, or if there is some, any information that may affect to the, infor to the user's information you have in your website or in your platform, they, you have to, or you have your, the, uh, you have to inform them. You have to uh, notify them. Okay. So the second uh, character in this story is the hosting provider. Normally, a hosting provider, a normal one, should uh, give support when you, your site is ha has been hacked, uh, just because they restore core folders or because they restore a backup or something like that. Normally, the 70% of the security uses, issues can be uh, fixed by the support of the hosting provider. And after that, you can just try to check with a security expert externally or internally, uh, like Sucuri or any other companies. It's important to understand that security is nothing, is nothing like a whole, right? It's a it's just uh, a lot of layers, one in top of the other. Uh, so the first layer of security, as I mentioned before, is you, because you are the weakest layer. So you have to uh, be educated of what you click, uh, where you click, what is the information they, the people need, and how, and uh, when. The second one is your device. If you are using a laptop or a, um, or a, a mobile phone or something like that that has been hacked or there is a virus inside or something like that, it's another layer you have to protect with an antivirus. Your connection, as I mentioned before, is all. Your website should be behind a Word, uh, website application firewall. You have to take care of your credential, not only yours, but only the credentials you give to uh, your mates or your clients. Try to use the second factor of authentication uh, if possible. Uh, the site security. So you should monitor and update your website as much as you can the server security, the database, and of course, it's not only just put an eye on them, you have to maintain this. You have to do all the whole loop in this uh, security layers uh, based system uh, as much as you can, okay? So there are some measures. Uh, normally, I divide them in reactive and proactive. Reactive means that something happened, already happened, so uh, what we are going to do is just pay mitigation. And proactive means all the measures that uh, you take before anything bad happens, so it's a risk mitigation, right? Reactive measures, as uh, I mentioned some of them, for example, uh, scan your site first to know what happened. Reactive means that already happened something bad, so scan first your website. I recommend SiteCheck, but there are some others. Like, for example, how do I know if my website has been blacklisted? So virustotal.com is a website for that. Then the CRC, check, remove, and change, which means, for example, in this case, uh, this is a WordPress users table, right? So here's there are the uh, users of this website. Uh, I just uh, protected those that are legit, but those that are not, it's very, they are very straightforward, right? Acming with key, and the, the picture also helps a lot. With no email, it's an administrator and also has a post. Ooh. And there are some others, for example, the manage BP migration is not a, a fake admin, it's just a leftover of a migration pro, uh, process. So remove them, is your site is not in migration right now. And another thing is interesting here is uh, that uh, this website, I think, yeah, I think that you cannot see it here, but uh, there is, uh, has six, six updates, uh, six updates uh, available, right? So please, every time you see, uh, you know, here, 
in the top of the admin bar something like uh, a number, a dashboard of, uh, you know, telling you how many updates are available, click there and update, okay? So uh, check, remove, and change. In this case, for example, check the admin's users and remove them. Also do that with the plugins. I have found a lot of websites with 60 plugins. It's impossible that you need 60 plugins, okay? Even if you are a very, very famous magazine, you don't need 60 plugins. So probably you have uh, uh, a lot of them in use, but some of them are just disabled because you use seasonal or because you use any time and then uh, it's not needed anymore. Update your site because updating uh, override the core uh, directories and, and files. So if the infection is in the core directories and files and core files, just updating, you just remove the, the infection, right? And as a last, uh, as a last uh, measure, restore a backup. Keep in mind that restoring a backup uh, could uh, imply a loss of information, right? Because maybe you did a backup three days ago and all happens, all what happens in the last three days, you will lose that, okay? Talking about proactive measures, before happening, but uh, something bad happening, uh, reduce admins, plugins, and themes, do backups, updates, invest in hosting and security, and install a WAF. It is important, this, this, uh, this slide is very important. The more doors you have, the higher risk. So I always say to Kaiser, what is Kaiser's? Means if you are going to do some admin stuff, okay, have an admin user, but if you are going just only to publish, user a limited count for that. Try to remove the number of admins, try to contain that, the plugins, the themes. Also, uh, don't reuse password, try to cha uh, change it uh, periodically and try to use the second factor authentication, as I said, and this is applied to all layers, not only in the VP admin. If you have FTP accounts, if you have cPanel, if you have a hosting provider account, change the password from time to time. And if you have been hacked, another thing that you have to do is change all the passwords as well, okay? Backups, have a backup strategy, but never, never store the backups in your production server. Always uh, store them in, a, in another server, another different side, okay? And a clean and functional backup will be your reference, best friend in a bad day. And I want to highlight functional. I mean, I have found cases that the people say, oh no, I have a backup, I will send to you. And when I receive it, it's corrupt, non usable so it's not only having backups, only know that they are functional. Update, always. This is important. Keep in mind that the cost of getting your website from a hack situation and recover all the information, recover with, in front of your users, will be way much more cost than recover your website because it accidentally uh, shut down because an incompatibility when you update or upgrade your website. So this graphic is important. Automatic updates enabled for our clients are only important for the 30%. Uh, percent. The rest of them are just when it's possible, when as soon as possible, or when the client wants or whatever. So our uh, black hat cutter, cut <laughs> there is very happy when they find these kind of things. It's important to invest in security in ho and in hosting. Keep in mind that hosting is the first layer, is the first one uh, that uh, protects your website, right? I always say if you invest in a shared hosting, keep in mind that you can be in a very noisy neighborhood. Okay, if you want to be in a chalet alone and just at your own, it's gonna be a little bit uh, more expensive. 
how much of your budget invest in web security, zero for almost 50%. This is important as well. So free day for our black hat hacker. And the last one, WAF, the web application firewall. is your war dark. This is important. I'm not going to read all of this, but keep in mind that a WAF is something like a washing tunnel. Every connection goes through, like for example, you can see here, all the connection goes through here, then it's clean, all the bad connections just are dropped, and then the good ones hit your side. So this is very interesting. Uh, this is my, one of the quotes I want to share with you. Everybody needs a hacker. So, arigato gozaimasu. If you have any questions, here I am. Mr. Stan, arigato gozaimasu.